you have any idea how many times I had to shoot this can with my air rifle to get it to look like this? Just one time. Hell yeah! Alright, if you're one of those people who likes things that are made in the USA, we got a doozy for you today. This is a PCP shotgun from Serpent Arms. Man. It's called the Serpent Arms Model 550L Air Shotgun. This Serpent Arms PCP shotgun is extremely lightweight and extremely powerful. It's 28 gauge and it shoots a variety of different shot at a thousand feet per second. So the shot shell that goes in here is called the Rattler Load. And it's basically a robust injection molded shell that you can literally put any kind of ammo you want in there. But these come preloaded. You can see I have some with some half inch steel shot and some three quarter tungsten. And one of these is two shot, one of these is six shot. These guys also offer shot shells for the Seneca wing shot and 50 caliber, the 50 caliber Umar X hammer, the 50 caliber Air Force Texan, and the 72 caliber AEA Zeus. It's basically, you get a pack of 10 shot shells with a snap cap on the end, and you put anything you want in there. As you guys can see, this thing is beautiful. It has this bronze finish, beautifully machined, beautiful design, and you gotta love that matching red dot sight. I'm in heaven right now. So we'll give you an up close look at this bad boy momentarily, but first, let's blow some stuff away. For more information on this 28 gauge Serpent Arms Model 550L PCP shotgun, just shoot on over to serpentarms.com. There'll be a link in the description. I think the price on these is spot on. It's definitely worth it. As you'll see, this thing's accurate. As well, they have a kit where you can get the sight and a compressor for a great deal. All right, I just wanna see kinda of like if my red dot is sighted in and get a little feel for the gun. So this thing will send stuff flying at 35 yards away, but right now we're at a very special 15 yards away. All right, you guys, I got some number two shot steel. Then we got six shot, three quarter ounce tungsten. Then right here I got number six lead and number seven and a half lead. Okay, to shoot a rattler round, you see I already cocked it. It takes quite a bit of effort to cock it. But once your breech is fully open, you're gonna take your rattler load and have the colored portion going forward. These back here are actually, I don't know what they are, they're holes. These ribs right in the middle of the cartridge, you just wanna shove those in about halfway and that will seat the cartridge properly. So if you don't get it all the way in there, it can affect accuracy. Once it's shoved in there, you go like this, you have a little release right here. Close that baby up. And the safety goes on automatically. So when you're ready to fire, you just go like this. All right, you guys, we're gonna start off with one of these 7.5 lead. Holy crap, let's go check that out. It's pretty loud. It didn't kick like it hurt, like a shotgun, a real shotgun would, I guess. But uh, that's power, that's power right there. Damn. I hit the bullseye, I can tell from here. Look at that, nailed the bullseye, but I also got, boy, it's kind of hard to see. The pattern goes all the way around here, but then the main pattern is right here. That's pretty awesome, well, let's try some more. All right, we're gonna hit this one with half ounce number two steel shot. Whatever that is, but it's in here. From the back, you can actually see these patterns a lot better. Here's the first shot I took with a 7.5 lead shot. And then here's a shot that I just took. And that was with half ounce number two steel shot. This is like if you definitely positively absolutely got to hit that thing, shoot this one. All right, now we're going to try some number six three quarter ounce tungsten greens. Man, I nailed that one. So guys, look, this right here was the first one. You could barely see it, but that was like the pattern. This one's way tighter. This one's like a nice little, I don't know, three or four inch pattern. And then that's the uh, shell casing went through right there. That is really not bad for 15 yards away. But we're definitely seeing the difference between the loads. So there's three different patterns right there at 15 yards away, according to your ammo. Very cool. 
we got a lot more shooting coming your way, but first, let's take an up close look at the Serpent Arms 550L PCP shotgun. So there's not a lot of stats or specs to list on this 550L. I'll get the overall length and weight in a second here. And of course, we'll do a trigger pull test. But like I said before, it's going to be slinging this steel, lead, or tungsten shot at 800 to 1,000 feet per second, depending which load you use. So it's plenty of power. You're going to get about 10 shots before you need to refill. I'm going to go through the manual and just read off a few things that you do need to know to operate the gun. It's got a 300 bar fill or 4,350 PSI. There's also a procedure you need to use for the first time you fill the tank. We'll go over that later. Every time you do fill your PCP rifles though, you need to do it slowly. Like if you're going from an SCBA tank. If you're doing it from a pump, it's already going to be slow enough. But here's something important. Never let the air tank go below 75 bar or approximately 1100 PSI. If you shoot it below 1100 PSI, there may not be enough pressure in the tank to close the valve. All the remaining air will leak out and the gun may have to be sent in for repair. It does say, as I showed you before, that you need to insert the cartridge and push it into the breech to properly seat it. Automatic safety. It says when not in use, the gun should be unloaded and uncocked. Leave the bolt closed and uncocked when not in use. It also says to prevent unauthorized use, store the shot shells separate from the air gun. Good advice right there. It says it's strongly recommended that you lubricate your air gun every 50 shots with silicone-based lubricant. And what they're talking about is basically called treadmill oil. It's pure silicone. It says apply it to moving parts, primarily the internal hammer. Ensure your air gun is unloaded and uncocked. Rotate the air gun so the bottom or lever is facing upwards. Slightly opening the lever exposes an opening to the shiny metallic hammer inside the air gun. Apply a moderate amount of silicone-based lubricant into the hammer through the opening in the green body of the gun. Don't use mineral-based oils. Don't use petroleum-based oils. Only use silicone-based treadmill oil, as I said. It says if there's any malfunctions, do not attempt to fix a problem yourself. Just contact Serpent Arms and they'll uh, have you return the gun for repair. Dangerous up to 1,000 yards. The red dot sight is powered by a 3-volt lithium CR2032 battery. Pretty common. Goes inside the cover. And your dot sight actually has a red or green dot. Each of those with three different intensity levels. As well, you have your choice of reticles. Very cool. You're going to get an Allen wrench to adjust your sight. And that's it. All right, back to the shooting. So right here, I decided to do a penetration test on half-inch plywood from about 10 yards away. All right, guys. First, we're going to do the 7.5 lead and the 6 lead. All right, first 7.5 lead. I'm going to... Oh, wow. <laughs> Holy crap. We gotta try that again. All right, here's seven and a half. I gotta aim a little better. Dang. Dang. All right, this is a six and a half. Whatever that means. Dang, I hit the same spot, but we have to do that one more time. Right, I'm gonna try to nail this guy in the head with the six and a half. Perfect hit. That's how it's done right there, sonny boy. So let's keep let's keep going. All right, we're gonna center mass homeboy with six. Definitely got the job done. So that's what happens to half inch plywood. All right, it definitely goes through. So we'll stretch this out to some longer distances as well as blow some targets away. But first, here's a look at the procedure for filling your tank for the first time. So only the first time you charge it, this is what you need to do. You're basically gonna hook your hose up to there and then pull this out until it builds pressure and then that will seal it. As well, you want to just charge it to 2,000 PSI and then let it cool off and then you can charge it the rest of the way. This is basically a 1 8 quick disconnect foster fitting. Just a standard PCP air gun, paintball. 
after it hit 2,000 PSI, I let it cool off for about 20 minutes, then topped it off to 300 bar, and we're ready to rock and roll. Also, here's a look at that red dot sight. As soon as I turn this red dot on, that's the red dot right there. Let's go outside and look at some stuff. Basically, that's the teeny dot. And you can have shoot with both eyes open. Of course, you'd have your cheek weld right on, and it would be extremely awesome. Check this out. Here's your green dot right there. Aiming out the door. All right, so when I look through here, I got a green dot right there. See if I can zoom in. So yeah, that's right on the uh, Firebird and I can make that dot different brightnesses. But then right here, I have that on the teeny dot. You can have a larger dot, you can have a crosshair, or you can have one of these numbers right here. Ooh, that looks cool. Wow, that is pretty bomb diggity. So, sorry, it's, it's hard to get the camera all right. But yeah, that's what you see, you guys. Like, I'm way back here. Look at this. And then, of course, you can see through there, and you can also do it with two eyes open. But that's what we're about to do. Well, let's see if I can get this can up there without knocking over the two by four. That was a tungsten round. Now we're going to do the 7.5 lead. So we got it with that 7.5 lead shot, but it just wasn't traumatic like a hit from the tungsten is. So I'm going to nail this uh, field target so you can get it down with a, some lead shot here. Ooh, I shot a little too fast. I forgot to screw it on, darn it. All right, we're still at 3,000 PSI. You just don't want to go below 1,000. Here, now let's do it with a tungsten right here. Oh, yeah. Oh, man, that dude got blasted like the Terminator. The bad Terminator. And then, of course, here's what that can look like after getting hit with a tungsten round. All right, here we go. Right here, I set up to test the shot patterns of a few different kinds of ammo at a longer distance. So we're set up here at a very special 32 yards away. All right, you guys, first off, we send in the green bean right here. All right, you guys, tungsten, here we go. Okay, well, that target's definitely dead. You see all those BB marks? It covers evenly, basically, this entire panel perfectly. Let's look on the back and see. There we go. So, yeah, look at that. That was one panel of that thing, which was about three feet by maybe 18 inches. And we got the entire thing evenly. All right, you guys, in no particular order, this is 7.5 lead. This was the first one and just did exactly that panel. That was it. This one did two panels. Got about twice as big a pattern. There's the angle. So right there, that's the target I was aiming at. And you could see these are all holes all the way up and down evenly, but then it spreads over to panel number two. And there's quite a few holes over here that weren't there, so. A wider pattern with these, definitely. All right, now I'm gonna do a number six lead, which also happens to be red. So if we look on the back, that one I just shot is just this pattern right here. It's like a perfect one foot pattern, maybe foot and a half. This is the six. The tungsten just kind of did a pattern on this whole thing right here. This is the six, it did a perfect one foot pattern at, or a foot and a half at uh, 30 yards. And then the seven and a half just kind of did a big thing like this, almost two panels worth. So I think these number six lead are perfect. The tungsten might just be a little bit too light. 
Good for close range though. So that's a 30 caliber hits right there. Look what that tungsten round did to this guy. And it also bent him a little bit. So it bent the quarter inch steel and gave him a nice raspberry. Whoa, there, there's a close up look at it. And it did about the same thing to this guy. Look at that. Dented the steel, you guys. All right, I don't wanna make this video too long. So let's finish up by blowing away some steel targets and some dinnerware. For all these shots, I'm going to be using the tungsten rounds. That worked. Those are 30 caliber hits right there. Look what it did to this guy. Anyway, we'll get a close-up look in a second, but here we go. I'm going to hit that uh, groundhog. Freaking sweet. So yeah, and it did about the same thing to this guy. Look at that. Dented the steel, you guys. Keep in mind, you guys, that I'm nailing all these targets totally freehand with a red dot sight. So especially with this tungsten round, this Serpent Arms 550L is extremely accurate. Every time. Oh my gosh, that puts a smile on your face. Look at this guy, bullseye with the tungsten. That's freehanding it with the red dot sight. Look at that guy. Freaking nailing him right where I'm aiming. Oh man, I actually hit the bullseye. Freaking sweet. We're gonna hit these guys with some straight up lead shot. We'll go for number six, or number 7.5. And then right here, I'm gonna hit Sasquatch with some half ounce number two steel shot. So this right here was those tungsten hits. And then this right here was that 7.5 lead shot. So a little bit of a difference on the grouping. All right, green bean, here we go. Oh, that is precision. I should have shot the one out of the middle. Oh, that is precision. Oh, man, that's freaking badass. <laughs> that is so cool. I didn't get it on tape, but when I asked Bugaboo if the 550L was loud, he said, hell yes. And when I asked him if he thought it was backyard friendly, he said, hell no. The trigger pull is measured in pounds rather than ounces. And it came in at a very special this amount. If your lever ever gets hard to close, take a look at the other side of this screw right here. Mine had worked itself out a little bit, but I just screwed it right back in and it was good to go. The other thing is this little guy right here that pretty much holds your tank from unscrewing. It looks like you can hand tighten it, but you should tighten it with like a screwdriver. I just hand tightened it and it came loose eventually after a couple days of playing with this. And then my bottle wanted to twist. So just go ahead and tighten that with a screwdriver. Also, any of you who are new to PCP, you're supposed to store all PCP air guns full of air. I top it off before I put it away. When I get it out, it's still right where I left it. And by storing PCP air guns full of air, that allows the seals to stay pressed up against the surfaces where they're supposed to be. And so that's, that's the best way to do it. The good news is I still have over 100 Rattler loads left for my Serpent Arms PCP shotgun. So I'll be back at you with another video soon.
and that one we're just going to blow stuff up the entire time all right everybody i appreciate you tuning in till next week happy shooting we'll see you on the next one